And that's what happens whenever you live in the country, your neighbors stop by while you're trying to make a video. So. What's up everybody? It's been a little bit. We're back here and we're going to do what I'm going to start calling the walk around. So we're going to give you a garden tour of what we've been growing and what's been going on. Thank you guys for joining us and welcome to Ashtree Homestead. I'm Dana. I'm Tony. Yeah. Let's go walk <clears throat> about. Let's go walk around see what we got going on. <laughs> walk around. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. So anyway, we it has been hot and things have been growing for a good thing, I guess. But some things ain't been going too good in the garden area. But we'll see what we got growing. Let Dana do a little bit of talking. Hey guys, this is our raised bed area. Um, we have three different varieties of sweet potatoes growing. We have the um, orange variety, the purple uh, sweet potato. And if you've not ever tried the purple sweet potato, it is wonderful. Um, it's very much, it's very much like a cake. Uh, texture on the inside but it's so sweet and it is just vibrant purple it's really pretty and then the third version that we have is a white sweet potato and to me it is more like a um, an Idaho potato uh, it's really really good and uh, has the texture of an Idaho potato uh, you can eat the peelings it's just they're just really really good and sweet um, I also had some bush beans growing, but I don't know that I'll grow those again. Uh, they're the Langdritz green beans. Let's go walk over and look at them. So which potatoes are growing where in the beds? We got the orange. The orange are here. Purple. Purple are here. And the white. And the white sweet potatoes are here. Mm -hmm. The leaves all look the same pretty much, but that's the different ones we've got in there. And what kind of the Langdorf green beans? As you can see, they look really, really sad. They do not tolerate heat. Um, this is more of a. If I do these again, they'll be in the fall because they just do not like the heat. They still have, they still produce, but they didn't produce much. Um, like I think we got two servings right. off of these green beans. So, this was my first time dealing with a bush bean. Um, maybe if I had planted a whole bunch of them, I would have been happier with them. And maybe had the heat not been so bad. And the heat came a lot earlier this year. So, they really didn't have time to produce a whole lot when the heat came. So, we had two different things going against them. So, yep. I may actually try them again and see what happens next year or maybe this fall see what happens and we're not really sure about when we're going or what we're going <laughs> we're just standing around maybe it'll work but and as y'all can see some of our wicking tubs uh, are somewhat empty at the moment a lot of the, our lettuces and stuff of course the heat came on like dana said and the lettuces didn't do good so we currently don't have any lettuce growing but we have some of our others. Growing. We got seeds <laughs> growing on that one. We're going to grow some seeds and see if we can re replant that next year. Um, we've got basil. Yep, basil's been kicking. And this, <laughs> this is a combination of holy basil and cinnamon basil. Yeah, we Mainly don't. because last year I put them in the same tub and that's what happened. They crossed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we think they cross pollinated because the cinnamon basil gave a real cinnamon flavor, but these have a cinnamon flavor, but they're not. They, they're still spicy like cinnamon basil. And what and you got going is, on here? This is hibiscus. Um, last year, I went to the Amish market and bought some hibiscus. Um, 
well, hibiscus, some of the blooms for tea. And, of course, they had the seeds in there. And I thought, well, I'll just plant some and see what happens. Because now it's just an experiment. It's fun just to see if I can get something to grow. And I've got four plants. Yay. And so uh, I've watched videos on YouTube about the hibiscus plant and that they like water. So we have an area on our property that stays wet. Uh, so I'm going to plant these and just see what happens. And we'll have some hibiscuses, make yeah. some teas. All right. Yep. And of course the lemon balm is jamming as usual. Yep. It's doing well. You've got some... Um... Whorehound? No, whorehound is over here. Oh, okay. That is... Uh... Well, let's hey, walk around here. So. Get this it one needs here. To be repotted. It's hyssop. Hyssop. Or hyssop. Yeah, it's not liking the heat either. Yeah. It's kind of getting burnt. <clears throat> we're thinking what we're going to do is take and use our wicking tubs as our herbs, individual herbs, rather than trying to grow our crops in it. And I've got four more raised beds to build and set in this area here. And then we'll have our main crops in the raised beds and use our wicking tubs for our herbs. Yeah, because I'm thinking um, lettuces are going to do better in a, uh, a bigger area instead of the tubs. Yep, yep, oh, yep. No. We'll see. Um, got calendula growing. Um, Which is good. That we can, yes. That's a, basically a herb of all sorts as well. Yeah, it's good to have around, really good to have around. It's good in soaps, it's good in lip balm, it's good... Good skin stuff. care stuff. Yep. And, and our comfrey, yep. of course, I've been cutting off of them, so they look a little sad right now. But when we got these at the beginning of the year, or not the beginning of the year, but the beginning of the spring, they were just little plants that I had got from the Amish and planted them, and they just exploded, exploded. all over this. And then the heat came, and they tolerate the heat well, but not prolonged heat. They start looking really sad. So I've cut off a lot of dead leaves, a um, lot that have gone crispy, and then I've harvested some green ones too. So they're not as full as they were. Yeah. Well, what we have harvested, we've dried it, and we're gonna be able to use that in the comfrey salves. Then I've got echinacea growing here. So that probably, we won't see anything from this until fall, um, any growth anyway, but I won't be able to harvest off of it until next year. And these are gonna get really big, so what I may do is find a home for these instead of in pots. Because mm -hmm. they, they get big and they like to um, spread seed and multiply, which is fine by me. They're, they're really pretty. Yep, yep. And then, of course, we've got the uh, marigold. Mm -hmm. Love the marigold. Marigold's good stuff. Yep. And, and then, well, I have another comfrey. I bought this three years ago. And this poor guy, this, this poor comfrey, he's been through the ringer. We bought him at a uh, crash fall, fe fall festival. Yeah, fall festival. And um, I couldn't believe a lady actually had that. She had some rare or unusual plants at her stand. And I asked if she had comfrey, and she did. And um, she told me, she said, yeah, the lady that had this, she used to make salves out of it or something like that. And I'm like, yep, that's exactly what I'm going to do with it. So we brought him home, planted him in a big area out in the sun. And he was doing well for a while, and then he just wasn't doing well at all. Um, so we moved him in between two trees, and he was thriving there. But we moved, so we took him up and took him with us. And we moved him into a shady spot that had... Uh, a lot of water. A lot, oh, not a lot <laughs> so of down water. Here, but this he little was, building down here is where we put him at. Yeah, I know, but it wasn't drowning down there. Anyway, um, 
he wasn't growing. <coughs> He wasn't yellow and he wasn't turning icky. He just wasn't growing. Mm -hmm. And so we brought him up here to see if he would be happy in this pot. <laughs> if he's not happy in this pot, I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> but we're thinking he's a different variety than the others that I got from the Amish. Yep, yep. And here we have our... What is it? The... It's a Swiss chard. Yeah. He looks a little sad. Yeah. Swiss chard looking a little sad. We it's have hot. it. We have eaten some off of it though in our salads. Yeah. It's, it's just pretty hot. good. Alright. He's getting the, the little spots on him. Yeah. It's not good. Alright. And then. We've got oregano and thyme. And, and, then, onions. and onions we have onions and these are getting ready to be harvested out of this bed this is the bed we had the garlic in we probably got about six or seven pounds of garlic whenever we got everything done but as you can see the onion tops have fell over and the onions have gotten big and so we're going to be harvesting that pretty well soon out of this bed the other variety of onions have not bulbed out. They're starting to, but they're still growing and starting to bulb now. So we'll be harvesting those pretty soon as well, another month or two. Yeah. So let's go out to the in-ground garden. Show everybody what's been going on with it. All right, here is our in-ground garden. This is our first one here on our new property. And we'll let Dana give us a tour down through here, what we have going on. All right, we have, um, all of these are soft tomatoes. So we eat more sauce with soups and spaghettis and stuff like that. So that's what we wanted uh, to put up. Um, so these are gladiator hybrid tomatoes. They're a paste tomato, right? Yes. Okay. And look at how these are jamming out. Yep. We have got tomatoes coming on. Yep. We had one casualty, and I'm not sure exactly why he's a casualty, but he is. And those tomatoes are not done too good. He's dying. Yep. So we're not sure if ants got to that one or just, we're just not sure what happened. Just a stress plant. Yeah. But the rest of them are looking good though. Yeah, look at that big one there. Mm-hmm. Wow. Big old meters. All of my trimmings I've done and I haven't cleaned them up yet. This and of course, that's the marigold. This is Roma tomatoes. Mm -hmm. and look at all of these tomatoes here coming on. We are going to be pasting and saucing and dehydrating. dehydrating and making spaghetti sauces. I've been trying to keep the limbs off of the ground, but they started producing tomatoes, so I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I have gave them support as much as I can, but I'm afraid I'll break the limb if I try and force them, because they're, they're pretty delicate limbs, actually. Well, ours are, anyway. <laughs> yeah, ours are. Okay, and this is... Roma VF. I'm not sure what the VF stands for. Mm, more meters. And they're doing good too. Mm -hmm. We have peppers. Yep, we got and our pepper plants. We have uh, the red Peter peppers. Yeah, those are like a medium hot pepper i think they grew them mostly down in florida my dad had a guy buddy that had the seeds for those so they're coming on somewhat small 
We got blooms though. Yeah, we got blooms on them. Just now getting that time of the year. This is the uh, Amish Italian sweet peppers. Here comes Melvin and Bart. And that's what happens whenever you live in the country. Your neighbors stop by while you're trying to make a video. So then we live right on the road too. So anyway, back to the tour of the garden. <laughs> but it was really nice seeing our neighbors. They're sweet people. Yep. They've, they've taught us a lot. Yep. So we went over the red pita peppers. These are Amish sweet long peppers. Mm -hmm. And then we have... Uh, cayenne pepper up here on the end so we just got a few plants of each one and we really like the amish or the what we call the amish sweet pepper because that's where we got it's an italian pepper is what it is italian sweet pepper i believe all right and then on to the zucchini yeah. and here is our zucchini here is some that we just picked just a moment ago laying in the aisle way but these are our zucchini plants, and we think we might have got a little overboard. What do you think? <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> there are some cucumber plants down there, too. Yeah. Uh, that I was able to pull some cucumbers. Yeah, we do have cucumber plants. and But the zucchinis are been jamming. Even in the heat, they are jamming out zucchini. We can't keep up we think they're small enough too small and we come out the next day and they look, look like that they're huge babies so anyway we have our row of okra and the plants are looking beautiful they are doing so good compared to what we had last year and the year before in okra because we was trying to grow in the tubs but the okra in the ground are wonderful doing great we have uh, two varieties of okra we have the clemson spineless right here then halfway down we have the heavy hitter okra and we're going to give it a try this year but both varieties are doing super good and then here is dana's monstrous end of the garden <laughs> well these seeds that i had planted were supposed to be pumpkin seeds. Um, I had gotten a little pumpkin last year that had the little knobbies on it. And so I thought, well, I'll just save the seeds. So I just let the pumpkin dry out and it's kept it all winter long. And so finally busted it open and planted pumpkin seeds. Now, that pumpkin was probably a hybrid. So I'm probably not gonna get the same thing that I had bought, which is fine. I just need some pumpkin. However, my neighbor pointed out a few minutes ago, I think we have squash and pumpkin growing. <laughs> it's a monster. Come this way. Let's see what we got. Oh, they, were, go? they were over on the other side. No, of the, oh, more. Uh -oh. There, and there's another one there. So, so that looks that. like squash to me. We may have some kind of variation of squash. <laughs> we don't really we know. We don't know until it gets a little bit bigger. But we got <laughs> blooms everywhere on the plants on this end up here. And our weed cloth comes to right here, but the pumpkin vines are running on out into the yard, which is fine. It's an experiment this year with the in-ground garden to see what kind of room we're going to need for next year. Right? And again, we got over eager and planted too many. <laughs> you well, need this much. well, on the pumpkins though, we, I think we only planted like three and two. So we got like five plants down through here. And I think it's going to be plenty for us. I'd like to be able to harvest some uh, pumpkin, put some up. Um, Make some pumpkin pie yeah. bread, some pumpkin mm -hmm. pie roll, pumpkin rolls, all that good stuff like that. And yeah, let's look at these others over here that Miss Barb pointed out to us. Here we go. Yep. There's some right there. And I think there was a bigger one somewhere a while ago. Uh, this is a green one over here. Oh, we got a green something over here. Where's, where's it at down in here? Oh, I don't remember where. Okay, there's some green pot over there. 
There we go. Mm -hmm. So. There's no telling what we're going to come and, up with. I don't know, I the leaves look different. Yeah. Because those are just dark mm -hmm. green leaves. And these have like a bluish. Pokey dots on them. Kind of a milky color to them. So. All right. Really and digging through the pumpkin vines. Maybe on the other side over there somewhere. But anyway, on to the next project. We have corn. Not a whole lot of corn, but it's a it was an experiment. Experiment. This is our first time doing some corn. We got two varieties of corn. They're both a sweet corn. Uh, the one on the upper end up there is the what is that? It is peaches and cream. Peaches and cream. Sweet corn. Well, one of them is sweet corn and one of them is peaches and cream. Yeah. So, but for somebody that has never grown corn before and don't know anything about corn other than eating it, and it's really good, mm -hmm. our neighbor um, had told us about these little, I don't, they're seeds, I guess. I'm not sure what these are called, but they, they're just real dainty and hang real loose and so they'll fall down in here on these big leaves and then that's what makes the corn i had no idea i thought the seed that i planted made corn so i didn't know this. well that's how it germinates yeah so anyway i just thought that was super cool but anyway we got little ears of corn coming on we got little tassels hanging around little corn cobbies starting out so those would be good on the grill and we don't have a whole lot of them no. but what we do have we'll enjoy it mm -hmm. for sure yep there's some ears up here that's coming on pretty good um this one is coming on real good mm-hmm and that one there looks mm -hmm. like he's coming on good. Yep. So when the tassels turn brown, supposedly they'll be ready. They'll be ready. And we'll have some corn. So, and this variety has kind of a purpley tint, purpley brown tint, little tassels. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Yep. And then these were kind of the same color. Yep. And then we have our blueberries that uh, we planted back in February, I think it was, or maybe first of March. They're they're hanging in there, doing good, um, growing in the hot heat, which is a miracle. Yeah. For them to be first year plants in the ground for us, anyway. They're they're well, a two year old plant, but. The area that we planted them in, we, we haven't watered these since we planted them in. But the reason is, this area stays a little damp anyway. So, we thought it would be okay mm -hmm. to do that. Because with our experience with blueberries before, I know a lot of people say, oh, they don't like wet feet. But in our experience with blueberries that we had, they, they really thrived. It. Yeah, they, they thrived on it. So... That's why we planted them here because of our past experience. Yep, and there's an underground um, spring that runs through this area. You can see where the green, how green it is in this area compared to the the Back ground that way. over there. Yep. And over there has all of this has been mowed the same time. Mm-hmm. So you can see how much greener and how much uh, oh, it grows thick out growth here. is here than it is over there. Yep, and we're going to get um, 
some mulch and stuff and we're actually going to clean up around the blueberries and give them some more ground cover with some mulch and do like a permaculture thing with mm -hmm. some cardboard and right i think we're going to do that in the fall though yeah so that we can cut the weeds down and then and it's not so hot yep yep well, let's go over and check out the girls see what okay. they're into today all right here are the girls of the property we've moved them back under the uh, shade tree here because it has been so hot here like it has everywhere else we've had temperatures in the heat index of 105 to 110 within the last two weeks and we change out their water and water the uh, ground down in the morning time and in the evening time just to try to keep them cool um, made a shade cloth for them and it it helps somewhat but it has been awful hot for them as well and that most time they'll hang out under the uh, chick shawl coop for the hot parts of the day and then they they come out this time of evening and hang out under the shade cloth and the and the water yeah we had um, cut up some peaches earlier and so some of the peach juice I brought out here to see how they'd like it and they love it that's what um, they're drinking over onto the right hand side. Yep, yep. Um, the one chicken is eating out of that little tub. Yeah. And that is the peach juice. I just thought it'd be something that they would enjoy, and apparently that's true. They like it. They like it. And I threw out some peach peels for them. They're eating some of them. Yeah, but that. All of them are doing good. They're growing. They're getting their combs. We have one that is figured out that she can fly up into the tree branch. And she <laughs> perches up there at nighttime for some reason. She, they evicted her from the hen house, evidently. But she comes back down in the morning and stays inside the, the perimeter. So... So there's the one that's got the cone. Yeah, there she's got she is. Water. All right. All right, guys. So that's a walkabout tour of what we've been doing here at the homestead. And we appreciate y'all <laughs> watching. And y'all have a blessed day. And hit that thumbs up on the way out and help us out. We appreciate you. Bye. Y'all have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. See ya.